Theodore, John, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, so I thought maybe we could start with what you're working on right now. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we're very lucky, Theodore, you're actually an ex-Princeton student, so maybe we can... Oh, you're also... Ex I don't know why I thought you were Stanford, you know? Yeah. I had written you off this whole time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but this is great. You're both Princeton. I love it. So you can maybe talk about... Um, your decisions since graduating, what students can learn, how you got into being an entrepreneur, yeah. and all of that stuff. But, but let's start with what you're working on. Yeah. Um, should we introduce oh. ourselves? Yeah, I? yeah. Uh, why don't you introduce yourselves, what you're working on, and yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, my name is Theodore, uh, class of 2020. Um, I am one of the founders of Marble Wallet, uh, which is a self-custodial wallet for dApps to onboard users fast, which really means, you know, if you're OpenSea, Uniswap, if you're one of these uh, dApps and you know you want to attract users who don't have a wallet yet, you can use us to get started. Um, we started this last year and we've been working on it since, sort of iterating on different versions of it, adding new features, trying to ship as fast as possible. Um, yeah, before this I was, I was an engineer at a company called Retool in San Francisco. Um, it was a really interesting experience. Retool is one of those you know, high high growth unicorns. Uh, there was a lot to learn uh, there from their success story. And I think, honestly, if anyone ever asks me for advice, uh, unless you have something that you're really excited about that you're hacking on, and honestly, you should pursue that, uh, you should probably join like a high growth company or a place that you're really sort of excited about or uh, intellectually pilled about, and you'll learn a lot that way. But yeah, uh, before that, I actually helped Natter a little bit with uh, DSO, or at that time it was called BitCloud. Yeah. Um, that's how I got back into crypto. I got crypto pilled a couple of times. First time was in 2013. Uh, you know, someone asked uh, an earlier speaker what was the first Bitcoin price they saw. They said 500. I saw 100, so uh, I, I should have just bought it. Flex. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I should have mined it. Uh, Turns out uh, Dell laptop doesn't work too well for that, even in 2013. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Nader reintroduced me to crypto, um, helped him a little bit with BitCloud, the logo, some front-end work there. You actually, a lot of people don't know, you made the first logo yeah. for BitCloud, yeah. um, was, which uh, is really crazy. I, I forgot know. about that until you just mentioned it, and I'm like, oh, that's where, yeah. <laughs> a couple of people got it tattooed on themselves, apparently. A lot of people got BitCloud tattoos, yeah. Uh, well, so, a story for another day. <laughs> yeah, a story for another day. Maybe yeah. we shouldn't say that on camera. But, it's uh, fine. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, what, and when I was at Retool, I was working on a bunch of dApps, helping them with uh, front-end engineering. I was helping Bology with his network state project in 2020, which is actually how you introduced me to Bology. Um, and if you don't know what who Bology is, definitely worth following him as well. Bology Srinivas and ex-CTO of Coinbase now works on starting a new country that is sort of backed by crypto. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you should follow that. Um, but yeah, uh, I, and I was really obsessed with this idea of making crypto apps more accessible. Um, and that's why I ended up leaving Retool, and I just thought there had to be a solution to make that ha happen. So that's why I joined Forces of John, and I'll, I'll let him introduce himself as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of like a little bit of the story, and I'm happy to go into anything in, in more detail. Love it. John, love to hear your, your yeah. Yeah, great to meet you guys. Um, joined Forces with Theo basically around April, before that I was at Robinhood. We're classmates from Princeton 2020. I was a back-end engineer at Robinhood doing payments. My first kind of gateway into crypto was actually in 2017 when a friend asked me if he could, uh, or if I could help him earn some kimchi premium. So he was in Korea trying to get money from the US into Korea and there was a limit of, uh, I think, 100k per person and he wanted to do he already spent his maximum his friends so he was like expanding his network and i was very skeptical of what this idea was at that time so kind of brushed it off but when i was at robin hood uh, doing payments means ach transfers uh, debit card transfers thinking about money movement in general i saw how this just wasn't going to scale in an international way and took crypto more seriously. Uh, after that, I got kind of crypto pilled into listening to Bology, Naval, about all these different things that you'll be able to do on chain and got really excited about it, started looking into Solidity and trying to build apps. And that's when I realized like wallets were not really built for dApps. They were built for standalone applications 
facilitating transfers only, but it wasn't really to enable like a social platform to be emerging or or for games, all these like different use cases that I think blockchain supports, but the infra just wasn't there. So I got very interested in the space and um, a friend reconnected Theo and me together, so. Another Princeton friend. Yeah, Princeton does wonders. Yeah. And since April, we've been working on it since. Yeah. Love it, man. Yeah, I really love how the people that you meet at Princeton, I mean, it is a really great network. Um, and I think my first company I started with uh, two of the people that I went to Princeton with. And then when I started DSO, someone I went to Princeton with also was one of the kind of co-founder people. So I think it's something that very special that if you, if you keep it and, and you, you keep in touch with all the people that you meet can be very powerful. And you should do more side projects with them. Yeah. I think that's underrated. Well, yeah, it's a great opportunity to do a side project right now. Um, and so I also love you guys are saying pilled. So is that like crypto pilled or like, yeah, yeah I love that. That's great. Like, is, is that, wait, are we that in that deep? I don't like, know. We don't, do Maybe people old, not say that? Get, it's like you get really into it, you know, uh, take the pill. Uh, so that's great, man. You know you're off the deep end. When yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll say this, Theo. Like, you do say a lot of stuff that I'm like, oh, man, I need to adopt that into my vocabulary. Like, you guys are very, you guys are very hip. I don't know. Uh, it's great. Um, but this is great. So we talked about your background and going into kind of entrepreneurship. So it sounds like the decision to start a company or, or join and very early, which is to me basically starting it, you know, because that's kind of where you are. Um, it sounds like it was really motivated by your kind of attachment to crypto or I guess how did you make the decision to leave Robin Hood and uh, uh, retool in, in your case? Yeah. So I always wanted to figure out doing my own thing. I had interned at different start stages of startups before I entered at a company that was like 10 people, it's 50 people, 130 people, and Robinhood was uh, much bigger than that. So it was always on the back burner. Um, I wanted to be able to own something of my own and take responsibility for it. But I couldn't really figure out what... I wanted to work on until I think I faced the real world challenges of, of the field that I was working on. And so that was kind of the trigger for, oh, this, this could be actually something really special. And um, that's how I got into it. Yeah, uh, very similar story here as well. Like always uh, was super excited about building things, was super excited about, you know, hacking on projects. And I always kind of hoped that I would find that one problem that, um, sort of uh, got me, gave me the courage to almost like dedicate like 24 seven to it. And, and I knew I, I wouldn't just like give up on it. Um, I think crypto was a big part of it. Uh, seeing how, you know, dApps went viral essentially for the first time in 2020, 2021, even 2022, uh, like millions of people were doing on-chain transactions, which was insane to me. Uh, it, it felt like all the promises of the 2017, 2018 bubble, or, you know, wave, whatever you want to call it, came true. Um, and there was just, like, this thing that, like, was in the back of my head. Like, I, 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 don't, I, I really like selecting my problems carefully that I work on. Uh, I really wanted to sort of dedicate my life force to something that's, like, I could, you know, easily put in, like, 12 hours a day and, and not feel tired or not feel, you know, bored of it. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that, like, you know, we don't iterate, we don't ship, we don't, like, revise our priors and learn from what we're doing. But... Um, it felt like it was a, a place where there, was, there, was a, there were a lot of things to try and there was a reasonable chance to win. Awesome. And so you decided to start Marble Wallet. Um, and so maybe tell us about that and why it's, I mean, maybe I can say, which is, do you want me to try and explain it or do you want me to want to? Yeah, why not? Well, why don't I try, right? Yeah. So uh, I think basically in crypto, you have wallets like MetaMask, which require you to install a Chrome extension high fric for high friction. They don't really work on mobile. Right. How many people here have a MetaMask or one, two, three? Okay. Almost three. everybody. Almost, Almost everybody. everybody. Uh, other wallets? Any other wallets? Yeah. Oh, well, everyone here has a DSO wallet. So, yeah. you know, you can say yes to that. No, I'm okay. just kidding. <laughs> no, fair, fair, fair. No, but, um, but I, I think really the, the problem that you're solving that I think is exciting, um, since also I am an investor, as I yeah. should say, is that um, you're making it really easy to 
for, for an, an app that's built on a, on a crypto blockchain like Ethereum or, or anything like that, to have a sign-up process that doesn't require you to install a Chrome extension that works really well on mobile, right? And so I guess that's marvelous. No seed phrase. That's right. No seed phrase. You don't have to remember and then forget your seed phrase and lose all your money, right? Um, but that's also secure at the same time, right? And that's so right. I think, uh, and I think there's also already a few apps that are embedding it, which is really exciting. And that's my understanding. And no, that's, that's why correct. I'm excited about it. But yeah, that's <laughs> correct. You can, you can think of it as almost like a you know, Web2 type authentication for yeah. your DAP. And, and the most important thing that we sort of like cared about was making it self-custodial. And, you know, you hear a lot about crypto regulatory burdens, all that kind of stuff. I, I really think one interesting part of crypto is that you can build things that are, you know, very interesting, but otherwise would take a lot of licenses, a lot like millions of dollars in regulatory fees. And you can sort of like sidestep that with this idea of like self-custodialness. Yeah. Um, and that's like where the most interesting stuff that's happening. So that's what something that we wanted to support from day zero. Yeah. And it's also safer, right? So, yeah. so basically when you log in with Marble Wallet and you put, let's say, $10 million in there, you know, some reasonable amount of, yeah. uh, but, but that money is actually in your custody, right? That you guys correct. can't actually access it. And I think the keys are split in a, in a secure way where you also can't forget, you know, your, your phrase. Exactly. Or, we make it really hard. Let's, you, make it, yeah. you can forget it if you really try hard. Yeah. It's like you guys can't access the funds, but it's yeah. also really hard to actually lose access, right? I think you split, you know, two of three kind of thing where, Two of, yeah, it's, it's it's a little bit simpler than that, but yeah, two of two. But yeah, it's really hard to make sense. Yeah, uh, and if you if you lose your password, you can reset it. You can you know if you have a you have a backup password that right. you know if you show it on a screen once, like your funds are not like at risk. Yeah. Um, so we make self custody that. much easier. And without ever actually having access, which I think is so important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So unlike Coinbase or FTX, more recently, you know, we we can't do anything with your funds. That's we, so cool. Um, and, you know, actually, I have to say a big inspiration for this was actually the DSO or BitCloud wallet because, uh, frankly, like when Natter was working on, on DSO or, or BitCloud early on, um, you know, you couldn't have expected people to install yet another Chrome extension. Uh, and the, the, the friction of installing a Chrome extension, imagine having to use Facebook and to install a specific extension for Facebook or one specific extension for Twitter or, you know, one for all of these things just to use them. It just feels kind of crazy. Um, also, so, yeah. uh, just a note on seed phrases. So we tracked the number of users who were coming in. So initially, BitCloud, which was the first app we built on DSO, has a, had a login where you have to have a 12-word seed phrase. And that's the only way to create a key and get in. And what's interesting is we looked at the number of people who created accounts, and then we looked at the number of emails we got where people were saying that they forgot their seed phrase. And we basically estimate that about 10% of the people who went through the seed phrase flow lost access to their funds because they put their seed phrase in something that they forgot or overwritten or missed it. And we don't have like a bad flow. You know, we have like a, you know, copy, paste, everything, verify. So I think it's so crazy to me that the most popular crypto wallet today, which is MetaMask, like has this problem, you know? And so... Anyway, I don't, I don't know that that's going to really, that's not the future. If you ask me, if you really want to get the mainstream into crypto, so. No, absolutely, especially if the more, you know, I, I, I think early on in crypto, a lot of these wallets were designed with, with people who wanted to maybe build, I don't know, just, you know, just hold tokens or do very simple things. And in that case, you know, so storing the seed phase doesn't really, it's not a problem. But when you actually want to build apps, it becomes a huge yeah, limitation. Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome, man. So another thing we like to do is, you know, you guys are entrepreneurs, recently graduated. I mean, recently, like more recently than me, I guess. Uh, and uh, as people who are in the space, in crypto in particular, we, we were asking for people like a request for ideas. So what do you think is interesting for them to th consider working on? You know, we have this competition, maybe something that can leverage marble, you yeah, know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I can get started and I can give you... Uh, the mic as well, but yeah, there are a couple of things. I mean, some of the most interesting things I'm seeing, obviously, like social consumer applications, chains like Deso make that super scalable and easy to build. Um, I, I, you know, I want to also mention the forecasters of the world, lenses of the world. 
Yeah. Natter is not a fun event, but yeah, this no, honestly is I, this is, is nice because it's a all in one package. Same vision. People who have a similar vision yeah. are always close to my heart, and I, I like them a lot. But the yeah. thing is, there's there's I, I I really think that like a lot of people are trying to build infrastructure right now in crypto, and you know, in, including us in many ways. Uh, but there, uh, the chains have advanced to a point, and the infrastructure has already advanced to a point where you can actually build consumer apps. And there's an opportunity, and I think it's actually highly underrated. Uh, so, you know, if you want to look, you, 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 there's always this idea of you want to look for ideas that are underrated. I, I think actually building consumer social continues to be very underrated. Um, there's games. Um, there's a lot of really smart people building games. It's, it's a small niche. It's not super popular yet. Again, very underrated, but a really dedicated following. So there's really, really recommend looking at teams like uh, Lattice from Xerox Spark or uh, Curio building treaty, or there's one from these guys that built like a um, what's it called? Uh, Minecraft extension using like NFTs uh, before, and it did like a couple million dollars in like revenue and and a shit ton of GMV uh, before uh, Microsoft shut it down. Uh, they're building now a game called Crypto Towns, which is sort of like a tribe wars but on chain. So there's this like all these people building like really interesting strategy games that leverage on chain uh, infrastructure. And it's really interesting because you can actually mod these games in a way where you're not in impacting other players. And all, obviously all the assets are tradable. They're all NFTs or ERC20 tokens or, you know, fungible tokens. Um, and I don't know how many of you guys play, uh, have played Warcraft or World of Warcraft or EVE Online or, or any of these games, but the fact that, like, there, there existed all these, like, parallel economies uh, that weren't really, were sort of, like, tolerated but not really encouraged by the game developers. And I think crypto really allows these, uh, really allows anyone who's building a game to compete with a Blizzard and Activision and, and all these, like, big, big players um, with, by essentially leveraging the fact that there's, like, a lot more liquidity in, in, in crypto. And you can essentially put out a game raise money for it, uh, for it uh, on-chain, uh, and then build a community around it that is completely invested in it uh, in, a, in a way that um, that's currently just not possible, and you have to be a big game studio to launch something that's actually really popular. Um, so those are the two areas that I would say I'm excited about. Um, John, do you want to add anything? Or I'm sure there's, there's more things I'm forgetting. Yeah, I 100% agree with Theo, and actually disagree with what Vinny had said about how he doesn't think consumer is really viable. I think there's a lot of really interesting things. In fact, that is probably the most interesting thing that can be built on the blockchain a priori, where you leverage, like what, what Theo is saying is, is a, interoperability is basically the biggest property that you can leverage from, from the blockchain where you have defined certain ways in which interactions can happen directly on chain so that you don't have to manage the servers, but it's, it's always up there. And a lot of people can write different types of clients. Uh, same thing with how the interesting applications and games playing out that way. Also social, where for Castle or Diso, it's all about, hey, here, here are these different ideas that you can leverage and build your own website or build your own app, but you're all going to share the same protocol. Um, the games that we've mentioned too have that property. So I would really suggest you think about what does it mean to to leverage interoperability and create interesting consumer app, uh, consumer experiences. Yeah, and I mean BitCloud's a great you know prover of that, right? Even without a good onboarding, um, you know, it went super viral, million millions of monthly active users. Um, so yeah, I think it's just. A matter of time. We've seen the sparks, you know. I think the fire has not not really been lit. But. Yeah, we had a conversation about this. I don't know if you remember, but um, we were talking about what's sort of like the next interesting thing in crypto and and retention. I think is the the keyword. Yeah. Like if you can build applications that bring people again and again and again, like trading is one way of using crypto to do that. And you know, come you come again and again, check your funds, you check your rewards, etc. It's great. Uh, but if you can build something that is maybe still financialized, but like to a degree where there's actually something interesting happening. Maybe it's like an on-chain Reddit or some, some interesting like application that actually could be, uh, in my opinion, like the next wave. All right. yeah. Thank you guys so much. So where can they reach you if they want to reach you? And let me give you, yeah, let's get this mic back. So 
Yeah, uh, you can reach me on Twitter, Theo Marku, T H E O Marku, M A R C U. Uh, or, you know, just like look yeah. me up on the internet. You'll find my website. S- subscribe to my Substack. Uh, <laughs> it's great. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, John Sang Wan Sa is my Twitter handle. But you can also find me on LinkedIn, probably. John All right. Sa. All yeah. right. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Give my hand. Of course. Thank you. Yeah.